Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and this is episode 5 of the Chronicles of Rook. Before we dive into this episode, let's take a look at all the amazing fan art that was submitted since last episode. First, we have a nice little sketch of Rook's katana by my Discord member, Kalu Akel. Very nice. It's even got a little bit of bandit blood dripping towards the bottom of it. Ooh, good stuff. Next up, we got this cool piece by my Discord member, The Wanderer. There's Rook looking at his new enemies, the Holy Nation, over the horizon with a cool planet looming over the midday sky. Not only does this have a really cool tone to it, but it was also done on a mobile device which makes it extra impressive. Thanks, dude. Ricky19 did another drawing of Rook, decked out in his dust coat and posing in the vast desert. Another great piece. Thanks, man. Being the pixel rookie, you know I'm a fan of pixel art. My Discord member PenPal110 did a nice one of Rook decked out in his assassin's rags and sweet shades and hat. An added bonus is this little animation of him drawing a sword. Great stuff. One of my longtime Discord veterans, Strat End, made a nice pixel art version of Rook 2. Pixel Rookie loves Pixel Rook. Get it? Pixel Rook is super thick. Thick. Just the way we like him. Next up, we have a few pieces from my Discord member, Baron Jenkins. The first one is an action shot of Rook engaging with the Great White Gorilla. Really awesome looking. Next up is a tribute to our underrated hero, Jin Sei, the cannibal killing skeleton. Look at how great this one is. Jin Sei is mid-swing, absolutely wrecking these plebes. Finally, Baron Jenkins did this awesome sketch of Rook with his buddy Hot Dog fading away off in the distance with a Samurai Champloo styled piece. All three of these are really awesome, and I really appreciate it, my dude. We also got two new great pieces from my Discord member, Kellabrimbor. The first piece depicts Rook after defeating the Great White Gorilla and dragging its corpse through Morn while thinking of his potential reward. I love the disturbed expression on these guys' faces. Really great piece. And the final drawing that we have is also from Kellabrimbor. This is what happens when a group of starving bandits mess with Rook now that he has his falling son. An absolute gorgeous and brutal piece. Thanks a ton, man. These are really great. Now we all know that I like to save the best piece for last, and you won't be disappointed. My longtime Discord buddy and moderator, Tao, made this video depicting Rook's skill with the blade. Absolutely amazing. And that's all we have for now. If you would like to showcase your fan art of Rook's story regardless of your skill level, join my Discord channel and share it with us to be showcased in the next episode. I'd love to see your work. The link is in the description below. Now let's get back into the series. Last episode, Rook explored a lot of new cities and locations. He fought and defeated a great white gorilla that was trapped in the abandoned HQ in Morn, but nobody saw the fight, so he told the story of how he defeated it in an epic battle of solo combat to become more renowned, even if that's not necessarily what happened. At the end of the episode, he found himself in the center of a slave market and he was very aggravated at how the slaver boss bragged him about all their slaves. At this moment, Rook knew his plans were going to change. The rain was pouring over Rook as the slaver boss droned on and on about his slaves and his fair prices. Rook stopped listening to him and he noticed a slave shop further down the market. He decided to go in and investigate it. There was one guard and another slaver boss. They were busy talking amongst themselves and not paying much attention to him at all. They were so focused on their own business that they didn't notice Rook sneak upstairs to check out their inventory. Nobody was up there with him, except a few slaves that were bound and caged. Rook was disgusted at their physical state. They were hardly fed from the looks of it. This is when Rook realized that his time traveling the world on his own was over. He became a very competent fighter and he could help these slaves escape. Sure, he could purchase them, but he hated the slavers about as much as he hated the Holy Nation. He didn't want to give any cats to their cause. He realized that he could help these men and maybe even train them to become strong fighters like himself. For now, he focused on laying low and picking the lock of this cage. He managed to pick the lock. The shackles that bound his legs were easy enough to unlock as well. The first slave was freed. He waited patiently as Rook unlocked another cage and unbound the shackles of another newly freed slave. He freed one last slave until he heard the men downstairs rustling around. He ran out of time and had to make an escape with the men he managed to free. He frantically looked over his map and the next nearest city was called Heng. He wasn't familiar with this part of the land, but if he could get his newly freed slaves out of the market, they could figure out a better plan then. Rook began to sneak out and the men followed him. He realized that he had to just run and have them catch up to him. He was acting on his emotions and was being rash. This plan wasn't well thought out and he was worried it would go terribly wrong. Some luck was on his side though. There was fighting out by the entrance of the market and it was causing a good diversion for Rook. Two of the three slaves were able to make it outside of the walls. The slaver boss was hot on their trail and in just a couple of swings, he took one of them down. He then began patching his merchandise up to place back into a cage. Rook wouldn't let this stand. He engaged on the slaver and in confusion, the slaver rushed towards Rook to accept his challenge. 
As Rook sprinted towards his new enemy, the Hiver Slave fled. He saw that Rook was attacking the Slaver and he decided he would join his new savior's group and fight with him. Rook's falling son was a massive weapon. It was still a little unwieldy and he took a hit from the Slaver. Rook landed his second blow and it was enough to take his opponent out. The man crumbled to the ground as Rook immediately began to loot his body. His new friend had no equipment and needed a weapon and some clothes. He looted the medicine and cats from him. He ran to the aid of the second freed slave that was knocked unconscious. All the while, the new Hiver member named Beanhop took the slaver's clothes and put them on. Rook gave him a katana and his assassin's rags. This was a better look on him. He needed the katana too because more slavers saw them in the distance and attacked. The two men were locked in combat and outnumbered 4-2 to two, with two additional bowmen in the back. Beanhop had virtually no combat experience and was taking heavy damage while Rook tried to defend both him and the unconscious slave over his shoulder. Rook did what he could do to protect the two slaves. One of his swings hit hard enough to make a slaver collapse, but Beanhop was still taking too many hits. Rook yelled out and told him to head north and he would catch up with him later. Beanhop reluctantly fled the scene and left Rook to fight off the rest of the men. He was outnumbered, but his focus was fierce. He was no longer fighting for renown or cats, he was now fighting for his life and the lives of two more men. While blocking most of the incoming attacks, he was still taking some hits. He calculated his counterattacks well though and took one of the men out. Two fighters were much more manageable than three. He dropped the other man and with one final swing, the third also fell. Rook was hurting and more men were coming after him. He thought it was best to run and as he looked forward, he saw that Beanhop came back to help Rook out. He wasn't much of a fighter, but he could help Rook by distracting the men. It was too much for Beanhop though, and he had to fall back again while Rook fended the men off. They made it far enough from the market that no more backup should come after them. While Rook tried to dodge incoming arrows from the bowmen while fighting another man, he saw that Beanhop circled back again to help. He was so caught up in the fighting that he almost didn't notice that one of Beanhop's arms were missing. It was completely severed during the chaos of the fighting. This didn't stop him from helping Rook KO the slaver though. They came up to the bowmen and engaged. Rook was beating on the one man while poor Beanhop was getting hit by a barrage of bolts. All the while, a wild bone dog smelled the blood from the fighting and attacked Rook too. Beanhop lost too much blood and was in a daze. He suddenly collapsed and was completely out. Rook was fighting off the two remaining men in the bone dog. He was still taking a lot of damage, but one well-placed swing hurt one of the men enough to cause him to flee and killed the bone dog. One more attack and the last man fell. Rook had to tend to Beanhop immediately or he would die of blood loss. The final slaver was foolish enough to get back up and limp towards Rook and try and stop him. Rook turned around and took him down once again with ease. He continued patching up Beanhop and he came back too. As Rook was tending to his own wounds, another slaver came out of nowhere and began patching his men up. Obviously Rook couldn't let him do this and attack the man. It took some back and forth with exchange blows, but eventually Rook bested him and he was knocked out. The fighting was finally over, at least for now. Rook placed the other freed slave named Horus on the ground and began bandaging him up too. One of the slaver guards woke up and Rook made sure he would stay down this time. It was finally night. After a full evening of bloody combat, they finally seemed to be in the clear. Rook managed to fend off the slavers and guards and they were far away enough from the market to not draw more attention their way. He surveyed their map to see what their next step should be. He was unfamiliar with this section of the continent and he wasn't sure if there would be more hostile areas. Beanhop lost an arm and couldn't do much with just one. Rook knew that World's End sold robotic limbs that could remedy his loss. He charted World's End as his destination and they began their travels. Beanhop was so hurt that he could barely walk and Rook couldn't leave him behind. He decided that they needed to rest up at the base of the desert so that they could travel together at full speed. He laid out his camp bed and set a small fire to cook some dog bone meat for the new members of his group. He laid Horace down on the bed to rest up first. Rook and Beanhop chatted for a while while they waited for Horace to recover. The next morning, an escaped slave saw Rook's party and asked if he could join them. His name was Takao and he saw Rook guarding the two other escaped slaves. He asked if he could team up with them. He was stranded and had no food. He was desperate. Rook gladly welcomed him to their party. Shortly after, Horace regained consciousness and he told Rook that he wanted to join his party as well. It was Beanhop's turn to rest up. While he was recovering, Rook looked over the three new men. He told the other two that the plan was to travel west through the desert until they reached World's End and then they would travel south to the hub. Once everyone was fully healed up, Rook packed up his camp bed. Rook paused for a moment and felt a bit of regret leaving one of the freed slaves behind. He should have planned a better escape for them. Regardless, he had three new members on his team and he had to help get them back to the hub. The first order of business though, world's end. They set off and started traversing through the vast desert. Horus was wearing heavier armor and it was slowing them all down. It was too slow of a pace and they could easily get ambushed. Rook scooped him up and they decided to carry him for the time being. Skim Sands was a dangerous desert. 
Fortunately, they were fast enough to outrun their dangers. They traveled all day and most of the night until they escaped the desert and entered the arm of Okran. Rook was distracted with his three new friends and he ran right into a Holy Nation patrol. Things seemed fine until they saw Beanhop. Rook forgot that the Holy Nation was notorious for being racist and sexist. The patrol leader told Rook to halt and speak with them. Rook didn't have time for this and decided to ignore him. They chased after them for over an hour until he gave up. Their trip to World's End was a struggle, but they finally arrived. Rook gave Beanhop a supply of cats and had him go into the traveler shop. Beanhop wasn't used to this kind of treatment. He was a slave since he could remember. He found a robotic arm in their inventory and purchased it. It took no time to attach it to his body as it connected to his nerves. There was some pain initially, but it went away quickly, and just like that, Beanhop was back in business. Now that their detour was finished, they had to prepare for their travels to the hub. There was a lot of Holy Nation ground to cover, and Rook knew that they would be hostile towards him if they saw Beanhop. This could be a treacherous run. Regardless, they began their next trip and took off out of World's End as quickly as they arrived. They were low on food supplies. Rook was used to feeding just himself. Fortunately for them, there was a Holy Nation farm nearby. Rook snuck into their storage shack and shut the door behind him. He picked the lock of the chest with ease and smiled as he quietly opened it. It was filled with ration packs and other food supplies to sustain them for the rest of their journey. He packed up all the food in his bag and snuck out of the farm before anyone noticed anything suspicious. The group continued to travel south. So maybe traveling on the main road was a bad idea because they ran right into a hostile group of escaped servants. They started attacking Beanhop and Rook knew that they couldn't run so they all turned to face their attackers. The melee fighters were focusing on the freed slaves while Rook went straight for the bowmen. Rook's three new friends were very inexperienced in combat. He had to do whatever he could to fend these guys off. Most of the men focused on Rook while the others were being knocked out one by one. Beanhop tried to help even though he couldn't stand. Rook was skillfully fighting off the other men. The metal pipes didn't stand a chance against his falling sun. Each hit he landed would take another enemy down. As the last one tried to crawl away, Rook severed her leg in one last vicious swing. The aftermath wasn't great. Rook treated his own wounds first. The other three men were heavily wounded. Rook tended to Beanhop next. They healed each other up and they needed to rest since they could barely walk. Rook decided that they would pay another visit to the holy farm that was nearby. On their slow walk back north, they were ambushed again. Rook was able to defeat them, but the cost was all of his allies getting severely wounded. Again. As he finished off the last bandit, Rook realized that watching after weaker men was not an easy task. He had to do everything he could to help protect them and train them to become stronger. He made another rash decision at that moment. He needed beds for his men to rest, and the Holy Nation farmers had some. Rook saw their attempt to chase down Beanhop as the first offense towards them, and he retaliated because of that, and killed the farmers in their small shack. As he was finishing the men off, he felt slightly bad for them. They were weak, but they were feeding the Holy Nation army, which meant they were his enemy. After he took out the last of them, he went back and fetched Beanhop. He carried him back to the shack to lay him down to rest up in the bed. This isn't mine. Wait, what? This isn't mine. Okay, isn't so Rook mine. murdered an entire farmer mine. village and caused the Holy Nation to become hostile towards him, specifically so his men could heal up there. Apparently the game wouldn't allow that though. Okay then. Rook looted the scavenger's basket off one of the fallen farmers. They could definitely use more storage space, so he laid Beanhop on the ground and equipped it on him. There wasn't really anything else of value here, so he picked Beanhop back up. He laid out his camp bed away from the road so patrols wouldn't notice them. He tucked Beanhop in so he could rest up again. The Holy Nation patrol was moving closer towards them. Rook tried to be stealthy so he wouldn't be noticed. The patrol was leaving and Rook had only one camp bed. This would take way too long for all of them to take turns resting in it. While Beanhop rested in the camp bed, Rook would take the others back to World's End to an inn. Of course, while Rook was gone, a group of starving bandits saw poor Beanhop off on the side of the road. He tried to escape, but was too wounded to get far. He tried to defend himself, but was taken out in one hit. They didn't want to kill him, they were just hungry. The bandits stole the rations that Beanhop was carrying and left him where he lay. Rook dropped Takao off at World's End and around that time, Beanhop regained consciousness. He patched himself up and laid back down. Horus also got back up around the same time and began traveling back to World's End too. He was moving slowly, so Rook ran to him and carried him back to the inn. Finally, Rook went back for Beanhop, scooped him up over his shoulder, and packed his camp bed. He ran another bed for Beanhop and himself. It was a grueling process, but they were all able to rest up and fully recover. They woke up around midnight. They could use the darkness as their cover while they moved south towards the hub. Things were going smoothly until daybreak when they saw another Holy Nation patrol nearby. 
They had to be careful, so they all snuck off the path to go around them. Once they were in the clear, they continued their travels back to the hub. Of course, another group of starving bandits found them and tried to chase them down. The men were tired of fighting, and Rook didn't want to have to juggle three men back and forth to save places to heal up if he could help it. These guys were persistent though, and they wouldn't let up. They were tired of being chased, so Rook put Horus down, and they turned to face the group of bandits. Rook had no problem fighting weak bandits like this. He would take multiple men down in a single swing. This was much more beneficial to his three newly freed slaves. They could use the practice to become slightly more competent fighters. Rook cut most of the men down while the others tried to land their own hits. The last man crumbled to Rook's falling sun. Everyone left the fight relatively unscathed. They continued pressing south. Unfortunately, this land was full of Holy Nation patrols and one found them. Now that the Holy Nation was hostile towards Rook, he could retaliate towards their advances on him and his men. He led a short charge into the two paladins that were pursuing them. These paladins were strong, far stronger than the newly freed slaves, but Rook could also handle them. Even though they were just two men, they did enough damage to Rook's allies so they had to set up camp to heal. Takao and Beanhawk could barely walk. Rook built a campfire too to cook up some dogbone meat that they hunted along their travels. Beanhawk would rest up first and the rest of the men would keep watch. After they were healed up, Rook packed up his camp bed and put in his imp- Wait, wait a second. Why wouldn't it let me pick up his camp bed? It's literally right there! Okay, so first they can't sleep in the farmer's beds, and now they don't have a camp bed to rest at for emergencies. I guess they would just have to risk it and make a mad dash for the hub. So it took them almost another entire grueling day of travel until they were back at the hub, and as you can see, they didn't make it there without some conflict. These bandits wouldn't let up. Rook could easily defeat them, but he wanted to lead them inside the walls of the hub where the other soldiers could help them fight off these pests. The slower two of the group were carried back. Now that they finally arrived, they eagerly joined Rook in the fighting. Quickly enough, the bandits were beaten. Rook took the men to a small HQ that was tucked away in the hub so the men could properly rest. Wait, did Horus just grow hair? It looks like being freed let him grow the Sonic the Hedgehog look in just five days. Anyways, that night, everyone was rested up, healed, equipped with Rook's spare gear, and ready to start training the simple way. That's right, they're gonna mine some copper. While Beanhop, Takao, and Horus mined under the safety of the hub's territory, Rook traveled south back towards the abandoned Berserker village. It was a nice area for settlement, and he thought that maybe he could rebuild it and they could make it their home. He got there and it looked like he couldn't purchase the buildings or land for himself. He wasn't even permitted to build in the area. He traveled slightly east right at the border of the swamplands. There was a major road running right through some nice looking land. Rook prospected the area and it looked like there was enough water and fertility that they could grow crops. Even though it was lacking in copper and iron, there were nodes nearby. At that moment, Rook knew. This would be their new home. He planned out the first building to claim the territory. Rook thought for a moment and he knew what he would call their new home. New Raleigh. South of Squin and west of the swamplands, New Raleigh would begin its construction soon. Rook and his new friends had a lot of work cut out for them, more than they knew. And this is where we'll leave off for this episode. I want to shout out my newest patron member, Lycan. Thanks for your support, man. I really appreciate it. I also want to shout out another patron of mine, Toddy. He went from a veteran tier all the way up to a super pixel rookie fan tier. Lastly, I want to thank all my patrons who are helping support the channel so that I can one day turn this hobby into a full-time gig. And at that point, maybe I'll even be able to get a new video out more than once a month. I really appreciate you guys. As always, thanks for watching this video and until next time, have a good one.